to use matrices and what you're doing here with this and I'm sure math teachers could explain this way better than me but when you're using a matrix you're solving systems of equations so we're getting solutions to multiple equations uh, all at once when we do that so when we take a chemical reaction like the one we have here uh, HCl plus barium hydroxide to make barium chloride and, and water now again this is a pretty simple reaction to start with we'll get into some that are a little bit more difficult but this is just uh, to explain how to set these up and I'll go through actually solving this with a matrix um, when we set these up the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna set them equal to one single product and I've seen other ways of going about using matrices but this is the one that I like the best so we rewrite the equation uh, definitely throwing a lot of chemistry out the window when we do this HCl plus BaOH in parentheses 2 but now when we get to this product side uh, instead of calling it a product what we're going to do is we're going to say minus BaCl2 equals H2O so we rewrite the equation in more of a math type format and now we're ready to go in and we're ready to create our matrix for this uh, system of equations that we have and when we do that uh, the way I approach these matrices I'm going to go down this side of my matrix and I'm going to plug in the atoms that I have involved in this reaction and they are HCl BA and O and then across the top of my matrix that I have here, I'm going to go with reactant 1, reactant 2, and I'm going to go ahead and call that reactant 3 because we moved it over uh, to that side of the equation. And then for our product, we're going to treat it as a separate matrix over here. So this is going to be for our product. And all I'm going to do is go through here and I'm going to plug in the numbers for each of these as they occur. So in reactant 1, I've got 1H, 1Cl, zero barium, zero oxygen. In reactant two, I've got two H's, zero chlorines, one barium, and two oxygen. In reactant three, now this is where we have to pay attention to that negative sign. I've got zero hydrogen and I've got negative two chlorine because we're subtracting that off. I've got negative one barium and zero oxygen. And now moving over here to my product, I've got two hydrogen, zero chlorine, zero barium, and one oxygen. So once I've created the matrix, now I'm ready to use my graphing calculator. I'm going to go ahead and plug in uh, these different matrices into a graphing calculator. So um, as I turn this on, I'm going to hit second and then the X minus one button. And that brings up uh, the option here to edit a matrix. So I'm going to arrow over. And I'm going to edit my matrix A. And for this one, to make these work when we have these, we want to make this first matrix symmetrical. So if it's three across, we're actually only going to enter three lines down. So we're going to leave that bottom one off. So we're going to have a three by three matrix. And that won't happen on all of these, but some of these will actually just delete a line when we start plugging these in. So I'm going to enter a three by three matrix. And my first numbers are one, one, and zero. Going over to my second one, it's two, zero, one. And the third third column is zero, negative two, and a negative one. And at that point I'm ready to quit that matrix. And now I'm going to jump over here and as B I'm going to enter the other. So I'm going to again second X minus one to bring up the matrix. And then I'm going to arrow over to edit B. And this one is going to be a three by one matrix. So my first value here is two, followed by zero and zero. And now I'm going to exit out of that. All right, so now I'm ready to do some of the calculations involved with this. And the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to hit my second X minus one to bring up the matrix. I'm going to go over to math. And I'm going to do the, the determinant for uh, matrix A. So I'm going to go ahead and enter on 1 as determinant. 
I'm going to again hit second X minus one. I'm going to select my matrix A, which was my three by three, close parenthesis, and hit enter. And what I get here is a four. And what that's giving me, that is the coefficient for this, this final product that we have out here. And we'll talk about those numbers uh, a little bit here in just a moment. If you're looking at that saying, I don't think that balances with a four, we'll see what happens when we go through the rest uh, of the calculations. All right, so the next part of the calculations is to go back and get the coefficients for the first three reactants that we have. So here I'm going to hit second matrix again. I'm going to select matrix A, and I'm going to hit my inverse button. So it's matrix A to the negative one times matrix B. So again, it's second, select the matrix, select B, and then multiply that by the determinant, which was four, and hit enter. And so this gives me the coefficients for the first three that I have, which is a four, if you see those, it's a four, a two, and a two. Now there's a couple things that'll happen. Sometimes we'll get all of these as negative. If we do, you'll change them to positive. And then second, sometimes these will reduce uh, as they do in this one. So when we reduce these down, we get two to one to one. To two. Now, I often tell students it takes me about 10 minutes to balance an equation using a matrix, uh, whereas this equation right here I could have balanced in 10 seconds had I not used that. But as I get into more difficult equations, it still only takes me about 10 minutes to balance them using uh, matrices. So the next reaction that I have here, this one's actually in ionic form. And again, this is one that you could probably look at and balance simply by inspection. But I'm going to go through the, the setup on what this one's going to look like if we actually use our matrices. Uh, use our graphing calculator to solve them that way. Again, the first step of the balancing is uh, to write these in equals the final product form. So I'm going to say Fe plus the copper 2 ion minus the Fe 3 ion equals copper. So I write it in that form. And again, I'm ready to establish my matrix here where I'm going to have iron and copper, but I'm going to have one more thing. When these are in ionic form, I'm also going to have the charge or ion or whatever you want to call that uh, factored into my matrix as well, because not only do the atoms have to add up from side to side and we balance these, but the charges have to uh, cancel out as well. So this one's actually going to be a three by three because I'm going to have uh, reactant one, reactant two, and again, that I'm going to call that reactant three. And then over here, we're going to have our one by three matrix on that side. So for this first one, I have one iron, no copper, no charge. For the second one, which is the copper two ion, I have zero, I have one copper, and it is a two charge. And then with the iron, I've got negative one iron, zero copper, and even though it's a positive charge, it's subtracting that, so I'm going to have a negative three uh, to enter into the matrix there. And then lastly, for the copper out here on the product side, zero, one, and zero. So now I'm ready with my graphing calculator to enter the matrix. So I'm going to hit second, X minus one to bring up the matrix, arrow over to edit. And this is going to be a three by three, which is what the last one I entered was. So I'm going to put in my numbers, one, zero, and zero. Moving over to the next one, zero, one, two, and over negative one, zero, and negative three. And I'm now ready to exit that matrix, and I'm ready to do the other one, second matrix, edit. This is gonna be the three by one that I have over here for the copper, and my numbers there are gonna be zero, one, and zero. And I'm ready to quit that one. Again, the first step to find the coefficient for the copper that we have out here, uh, the first step is to hit second x minus 1 for the matrix, arrow to math, and I want to find the determinant of A. So I select determinant, go back in again, select A. I'm going to go and close the parenthesis, although you don't have to there, but it's a good habit to do. Hit enter, and I get that the coefficient for this is negative 3. Now I'm ready to go through the calculation side to find the rest. So I'm going to do second matrix, select A, to the minus one power, inverse of A, 
multiplied by matrix B, so that's second, uh, X minus 1, select matrix B, and then I'm going to multiply that by the determinant, which is negative 3, and I get solutions there of negative 2, negative 2, negative 3, and negative 2. So my coefficients are negative 2, negative 3, and negative 2. Now again, they're all negative, so I'm going to change those to positive coefficients, and those do not reduce. So the final one I have here, this is an acid redox equation, and this is one where I would teach uh, that you write the half reactions, balance everything other than hydrogen and oxygen, balance your oxygens with water, hydrogens with H+, charges with electrons, least common multiple of electrons to cancel out, and then add those back up. And, and some students catch on to that process, but some of them struggle, and I've had students that find that this is one where matrices might actually, in fact, be an easier way uh, to go about this. So again, I'm going to set it equal to the final product, which is water. So I've got H plus plus I minus plus ClO minus minus I3 negative triiodide ion and minus the chloride ion equals H2O. Ready here to establish the, the matrix. So the first, I've got hydrogen I've got iodine, chlorine, oxygen, and I've also got the, the charge that we have on each of these. So for hydrogen in the first one, it's 1, 0, 0, 0, and the charge there is a 1 as well. Moving over to the second reactant, the I minus, I got 0, 1, 0, 0, and that one is a negative 1 charge. ClO minus, 0, 0, uh, 1 and 1, and that is a minus 1. And now the I3, which remember this is on the product side, so we're subtracting that one, uh, is 0. It's negative 3 iodine, 0 and 0. Now because it's a minus a negative 1 charge, that makes this actually a positive 1 value. And the last one, minus a chloride ion, 0, 0, negative 1 chlorines, zero and minus one minus one charge is a positive one and notice that's a five by five matrix so I don't have to mark any rows off like I did on the first one final matrix that we have out here for the H2O is two zero zero one and zero. Second matrix edit and this is a five by five so it is one and then zeros all the way down to the bottom one is a 1. Next column is 0, 1, 0, 0, negative 1, followed by 0, 0, 1, 1, negative 1. Next column, 0, negative 3, 0, 0, positive 1. And the fifth column, 0, 0, negative 1, zero, positive one. So I've got those entered into the matrix. Quit that matrix. Go to matrix B. Edit, which is going to be a five by one matrix. And those values are two, zero, zero, one, and zero. Quit that matrix. And now I'm ready to let the calculator do the dirty work. I end up with a determinant, second matrix, math determinant, second matrix A, a determinant of 2, so my coefficient for the water is a 2, and now I'm ready to find the rest of them. Second matrix, select A to the minus 1, that's A to the minus 1 power, times select matrix B, times the determinant, which was 2, enter, and I get 4, 6, 2, 2, 2. So my coefficients are 4, 6, 2, 2, 2. And then we already had the one here that was a 2. Of course, those will reduce. And that's going to be 2 to 3 to 1 to 1 to 1 to 1. And there's a balanced acid-base redox using matrices.